old are fossils? If you grew up like I did, taught in a state-run school system, you probably have a ready answer. Millions of years. I grew up learning the typical evolutionary story party line regarding rocks and fossils, that slow fossilization ideas were true, and that fossils were millions of years old. I read books with detailed and colorful diagrams showing that fossils formed mostly when animals and or plants died in watery environments. And there would often be references to former inland seas, from millions of years ago of course, in the area where the particular fossil being discussed was found. And I could easily recite standard examples of how fossils form to any adult that would bother to take the time to listen. I'd typically use the canned example I'd seen and heard so often, a fish. According to the typical series of pictures I'd seen depicted in a wide assortment of books, a fish would die, sink to the bottom of a lake, and get slowly covered in layers of silt and mud. Then, as millions of years would pass, the sediment got compressed as new layers gathered. The mud would turn into rock, the fish would become permineralized, and voila, it became a fossil. And so convincing was this seemingly scientific process that I never seemed to compare it to what I'd actually observed dead fish doing, sitting on the bottom of the Atlantic at the end of a wooden dock I'd sat on, feet dangling over the water in Newfoundland. If I'd just taken a few seconds to think about it, I would have easily realized that what my own eyes observed is that dead fish tend to float and bloat and the ones that were at the bottom were chewed up by crabs and little nippers quite quickly. And even the bones didn't last all that long. I realize now that I'd been taught what to think, not how to think, and I never heard anyone challenge these ideas in class. And like me, due to that widespread evolutionary indoctrination in the school system, most people, even Christians, still believe that it takes millions of years for rocks to form and a living organism to become a fossil. I realize now that a major reason I never doubted these ideas is that I'd never been shown an alternative for how fossils could have formed. I never heard one person in my earlier years ever mention that a giant catastrophe, especially the great deluge recorded in the Bible, could have buried creatures rapidly and completely and formed fossils very quickly. After revisiting the whole idea of fossilization many years later, I realized that evolutionary researchers can't explain many things according to that long age paradigm which is likely why they've more recently begun to embrace and incorporate catastrophic explanations into their evolutionary system. Like why they've found fossilized animals in the middle of very specific short-term activities and actions, like eating or giving birth. For example, a fossil of a squid-like creature was discovered in the southern coast of England with its arm wrapped around a fish with a head that was crushed. This supposed 200 million year old fossil was discovered in the 19th century, but was recently re-examined and identified as the oldest known example of a coleoid, a class of cephalopods that includes octopuses, squids, and cuttlefish attacking its prey. It appears that the belemnoid captured, killed, and was about to eat a fish when, according to evolutionary researchers, both animals were buried in sediment so suddenly by a catastrophic event that they were entombed instantaneously, and obviously fossilized quite quickly before decay set in, because cephalopods like squid and octopus turn into jelly quite quickly upon dying. These types of fossils are becoming well known. For example, at the Creation Museum in the United States, we have a fossil fish displayed that was swallowing another fish while they were buried. Another is the fossil of a horseshoe crab with its tracks visible in the sediment it was traveling along. This indicates that not only was it buried at lightning speed according to the common geological perspective, but that the right chemical conditions in the sediment for rapid fossilization to protect the specimen and its tracks must have been present, eliminating the need for any kind of deep time process to account for the fossilization process.